So if you're anything like me, you tend to shoot the action of a mixture between Stephen Hawkins and Stevie Wonder. Well have no fear because I'm going to give you the best Black Ops 6 tips for getting better accuracy and hitting more shots. Now the very first thing that we need to talk about, the first thing that you need to do if you're struggling with your aim in Black Ops is to make sure you have the correct settings. Because settings can make or break your gameplay. I know, you're probably thinking, why do I need this bum settings when I've already copied the pros? But I hate to break it to you buddy, if you've clicked on this video you are definitely not a pro. So wipe yourself down and pit on your big boy pants. For an example, I had my field of view all wrong when I first started playing this game and it completely threw me off for the first three or four games until I changed it back to what I was used to. Now, the first thing you're going to want to get dialed in is your sensitivity. I personally play on 8.7. What this allows me to do is have quite fast mobility when turning around so I can snap onto the enemies. I prefer to have more movement side to side rather than vertically so that's why I have mine split 8-7. I also changed my ADS multiplier to 0.8. This means that when I've found my target and I aim down sight and zoom in on said target, I'm able to finally pinpoint where my crosshair is aiming. Obviously I can't tell what the best sensitivity is for you but my suggestion would be to go as high as you physically feel comfortable with. For me, that's an 8. For you, that might even be a 4. Then what you can do to compensate for that higher sensitivity is change your ADS multiplier. It might take a few games to get used to, but I promise you it's going to be super effective in the long run. The next setting that I want you to be aware of is field of view that I spoke about at the start of this video. On console and PC, you are able to change your field of view. This means how much of the map you can see when you're actually just staring down a lane, for an example. On lower field of views, it will mean that your vision is tighter, and on higher field of views, it will mean that your vision is really wide. The problem is, if you go to the full extreme and go 120 field of view, this means enemies in the distance are going to appear very, very small. On the flip side of this, if you go with a 60 field of view, this means that your peripheral vision is cut off and you're not going to be able to spot enemies as easily and quickly. You're going to get caught off by people flanking you from the sides a lot. I personally use about 105. I find this is the sweet spot for me in being able to both see enemies far away and be able to see enemies who are coming up on my flanks. Now as well as this, what you also need to change is your ADS field of view and you want to swap this to affected. This means that when you're aiming down your sights, your field of view is the same as if you were not aiming. This means that you'll get substantially less visual recoil on your gun, meaning that you'll be able to hit your targets a lot more effectively. Another good setting to change whilst we're talking about this topic is your weapon field of view. I have mine set to wide, and this means that your gun takes up less real estate on screen, again allowing you to spot enemies faster and also give you that much desired less visual recoil. The next thing that you're going to want to get dialed in is your aim assist. This is sort of a contested topic, but I would always suggest that you use dynamic. I've been using it myself and tested the others online and in private matches, and I found it to be the best for me. Now paired with that, you also want to drop the response curve down a tiny bit to around 0.8 or even 0.7. I found this gives me the sweet spot for really snappy aim and takes away some of that floatiness some people say when using the dynamic response curve. Now the final setting that I think you should change in this game is to do the center dot. You can find this by going into interface, gameplay HUD and then to crosshair. All this does is keep a center dot in the middle of your screen at all times. It's meant to help with motion sickness, however if you change it to the larger version of this, what this will enable you to do is always be aware where the center of your screen is. Wherever this dot is on your screen, when you hit that ADS button, that is where you're going to be aiming. Make sure that you practice with this dot on, because centering is one of the most important things you can do in this game. If you come racing around the corner and you're looking too far down or too far up and there's someone there, you're going to end up getting killed in a game like Call of Duty where the time to kill is really fast. Centering is so important because 9 times out of 10, whoever shoots first kills first. Now moving on, I just want to talk to you about recoil. I've already told you how you can lessen the effects of the visual recoil, but now I want to talk about actual recoil. First and foremost, what you should not be doing in Call of Duty is aiming for the head. Now I know that seems very counterintuitive given some of the camo challenges we've got this year, but hear me out. Especially in this game, there are a lot of attachments that allow players to add flinch to their gun. If you don't know what that means, flinch is essentially where you get shot and your gun is going to bounce upwards. Therefore, if you're aiming at the center mass or the chest, 9 times out of 10, if an enemy does clip you, it will send your crosshair upwards and allow you to get that headshot. I know this seems like a counterintuitive thing to keep in mind because why would you want to be getting shot? However, because of how big the flinch is in Black Ops, I promise you, you will not regret keeping your aim lower. 
Now one more thing on recoil, I want you to learn how to control the recoil of the gun. In the first clip here, I'm just holding down the shoot button without controlling the recoil at all. Now all I have to do is apply the smallest amount of pressure down on my right analog stick and already you can see how much more accurate it is making my gun. I know this is something to get used to and every gun has a different recoil pattern, but once you find the gun that you like whilst you're unlocking those camos, make sure you take the time just to spray a few walls, jump into the firing range and learn what the recoil pattern does. If it goes up and slightly to the right, well then pull down and slightly to the left. You only have to make tiny, tiny little adjustments for it to seriously and drastically improve your aim. And that's about all the tips I want to give you guys today for how to improve your aim in Black Ops 6. I really hope that you found some of them useful. And before we end the video, I just want to say to you guys that I'm really trying to get to around 4,000 subscribers by Christmas. And I would seriously, seriously appreciate it if you just take that half a second to hit that subscribe button. If you sub to me, I promise I'll continue to bring you absolute banger content throughout the lifespan of Black Ops 6. Now, for those of you who have watched my videos for a while, you know that I love to see who sticks around until the end. So, if you're still here, I'd like you to let me know by answering this question down in the comments. Would you rather have no eyebrows or your fingernails grow an inch a day? That's it for me. As always, I hope you all have a wonderful day.